with a cipher, which is basically just something coded, there are always going to be correlating keys that are needed to break, crack, or read the cipher. And the same thing applies with the internet or World Wide Web or whatever else it might be called, which governs the domains or demesnes, which is a domain name, that sort of thing. In the Keys to the Kingdom series, published under the name Garth Nix, the analogy or metaphors to the internet become very apparent in the house structure, which is described as floating in the sky and in a different dimension outside of quote-unquote normal reality, which bears a striking resemblance to a particular part in the Book of Mormon, which is a work that was acquired and imparted with the sanctity of the religious orders so that they could obfuscate its meaning as always. And interestingly, this one was published by the so-called Church of the uh, Christ or Latter-day Saints or whatever, and allegedly was published in 1830 originally. But interestingly enough, this part is copyright from 1981 and 2013 by Intellectual Reserve, Inc., which is, of course, incorporated in states all rights re reserved. Now, that's clearly the work of a honest relative. That's clearly at least the honest work of a thief. Or it's showing that it's intellectual property what's being published. But allegedly based off of something that was published in 1830 suggesting that what they're doing is exactly what Disney does where they take something that's in public domain again with that word domain and they copyright their form of it which is clearly a way to circumnavigate the idea of what a copyright actually is but as long as nobody does anything about it especially considering our court systems are not what they seem well, then they don't really have to worry about anything. It's all just a, a way to get people to comply to something that's pretending to be legitimate. But anyway, even in this illegitimate work, there's a section that clearly stipulates and explains the Internet. In the first Nephi uh, 8, 16 through 30, it states under 21, and I saw numberless concourses of people, many of whom were pressing forward, that they might obtain the path which led unto the tree to, by which I stood. And it came to pass that they did come forth, and commence in the path which led to the tree. And it came to pass that there arose a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceedingly great mist of darkness, insomuch that they who had commenced in the path did lose their way, that they wandered off and were lost. And it came to pass that I beheld others pressing forward, and they came forth and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron, and they did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even until they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree. And after they had partaken of the fruit of the tree, they did cast their eyes about as if they were ashamed. And I also cast my eyes round about, and beheld on the other side of the river of water a great and spacious building, and it stood, as it were, in the air high above the earth. And it was filled with people, both old and young, both male and female. And their manner of dress was exceedingly fine, and they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers towards those who had come at and were partaking of the fruit. And after they had tasted of the fruit, they were ashamed because of those that were scoffing at them, and they fell away into forbidden paths and were lost." And now I, Nephi, do not speak all the words of my father, but to be short in writing, behold, he saw other multitudes pressing forward, and they came and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron, and they did press their way forward, continually holding. Now before we go on to the next page, some things that would note be no of noteworthy uh, character here would be the 
scoffing people, which sound quite a lot like uh, internet trolls, that type of deal. And the house clearly bears a striking resemblance to the one that's described in the Keys to the Kingdom series. As well, the shadows and darkness and being lost, they're all uh, metaphors that are similar to uh, ways that the internet works. On the next page, it states, Fast to the rod of iron until they came forth and fell down and partook of the fruit of the tree. And he also saw other multitudes feeling their way towards that great and spacious building. And it came to pass that many were drowned in the depths of the fountain, and many were lost from his view, wandering in strange roads. And great was the multitude that did enter into that strange building. And after they did enter into that building, they did point the finger of scorn at me and those that were partaking of the fruit also, but we heeded them not. These are the words of my father, for as many as heeded them had fallen away, and Laman and Lemuel partook not of the fruit, said my father, and, and the rest of that is uh, not applicable to our theme here. But I'm sure there are other symbols and whatnot in the Book of Mormon that are obfuscated. Now, when it comes to the house from the Keys to the Kingdom series, which also seems to float in the sky, but it's listed as being in a different dimension, time is relative, just like when you go into the internet and you can spend a long time online, but minutes only, or what feels like a long time, but only minutes pass in reality. Just as with video games, the time in a video game is relative to how it is set up in the video game and what could be an hour in our time would be days in that video game. And then it also has the theme of a person going into the house that's human and being in the house for a particular long amount of time and becoming something else. Just like a person that spends too much time online will become essentially taken over and they will become embodied in the internet realm and most of who they are will be contained within and they won't really have much of a presence in reality. The house in the Keys of the Kingdom also has spirit horses which are called well, they're not really spirit horses, but they're called not horses, so they're not horses. But they are uh, in at least described in the shape of a horse, but again, they're called not horses, meaning not horses. <laughs> they have red eyes, and they're made out of metal, which sounds quite a lot like they could be uh, a vehicle, or they could be a computer, or something of that sort. The book also has a treasure tower, which is described as being surrounded by a pyramid of glass sounds quite a lot like a skyscraper to me and within you have root treasure rooms which seem to be well represented as the server rooms that you find at the top of skyscrapers and so that's clearly an analogy it could relate to other things however also the books talk about the improbable stair where if you can fall off or you can get on different levels and get lost which sounds quite a lot like a search engine such as Google where you scroll through different pages and then you can click on those different pages but you can get lost in the different rabbit holes that could be found. Also the book talks about these word eater serpents which seem quite a lot like the content moderators that we have that go around and eliminate specific texts and words by well at least in the book they spit acid but uh, they essentially just erase words and the content that have has published those words such as somebody's profile could get moderated meaning deleted and have all their information wiped as happened to my Facebook profile also the house has denizens which are these superior beings that end up being not so superior actually and uh, work with administrative type of deals and sound a lot like uh, algorithmic entities or juridic entities that sort of thing the uh, non-human components or software right you know could be software but they're not human components anyway but the book also has the obvious explanation of a of uh, medical tyranny 
and how they they get these impose these very uh, dangerous, destructive quarantines and community quarantines by people that don't really know what they're doing and what's going on, and they are following uh, their their own programming in reality, and they have the uh, windowless. FEMA camp buses that take people away to essentially concentration camps for community quarantines and they are dealing with something that they don't really know what it is and there's so many other different undertones that and and uh, insinuated symbolism that has to do with the reality of now and especially the medical tyrannies and, and whatnot. The book also talks about the concepts of surveillance and how that works, how there's a lot of uh, surveillance mechanisms that shut down uh, communication methods like cell phones and, uh, and, of course, the Internet, but also the bombarding of paperwork and specifically targeting somebody with bureaucratic red tape to make it so that they uh, can't do anything and that they are essentially bound by endless piles of paperwork that is described in the House of the Keys to the Kingdom series. Now, the series follows the protagonist, which is Arthur, a asthmatic child who is chosen as the heir to the house and, and reality and, and existence, which is being intentionally mismanaged by trustees. Sounds quite a lot like things that are becoming more and more apparent today as happening in reality. And uh, he is chosen by the will, which the trustees are not carrying out, and then the will takes different forms and has different clauses. Sounds quite a lot like a certain document that is uh, intentionally uh, be, uh, in, intentionally not fulfilled, but the people that are not fulfilling it are doing so in the name of that document, which we're all pretty familiar with. So if you would like to find more lessons and symbolism that are contained within, uh, I hope that this video provides a sort of code to unravel the cipher and a context to do so. Also, if you have enjoyed this content, please check out the free books that are available at the link. And if you so choose, you may support my work at PayPal Cash App and buy me a coffee. Thank you, and until next time, this is brought to you by S.C. Coleman, the author.